So far in class, we did a brief introduction about special relativity, and we saw how we can get things like length contraction or time dilation um, from objects that are moving at relativistic speeds. So today we're going to kind of go a little bit more in depth and show a bit more complicated math to describe how we deal with things that are moving relativistically. And to start, we will show how we can uh, describe the coordinates when we want to go from one frame to another frame that might be moving at some velocity. And so the first thing that we're going to do is define a new type of vector called a four vector. And so just like any other vectors that we've seen so far, we can have an x, y, or z coordinate. But now that we're dealing with special relativity, we are going to introduce a new coordinate that we can have, and that's going to be time. And so in order to make our time uh, coordinate have the same units as position, we will just take our time and multiply it by c, which is the speed of light. And so the units for that, the units for time are in units of seconds, units of c are in meters per second. So if you multiply those together, then you're left with the unit that's in meters, which is the unit that we use for a position. So this is what our four vector is going to look like. And now with this new type of vector, we can describe anywhere you are in space at a given time. And that's going to allow us to do comparisons between one frame and another frame, where these frames might be moving with respect to each other. So the kind of the paradigm that we're going to be using two different coordinate systems where our first coordinate system will have the x and y axes. And then our primed coordinate system is going to be moving with respect to the unprimed coordinate system at a velocity v. And so now how do we relate the coordinates in the unprimed frame to the coordinates in the primed frame? So <clears throat> if we think about the Galilean transformations, If we want to compare the x and the x primed coordinate system, we might get something like this. So in the primed coordinate system, or maybe we'll do it the other way first. So in the Galilean transformations, <clears throat> if we look at the unprimed coordinate system, the primed coordinate system is just offset in the x direction by the velocity times the time in the primed coordinate system. So we could imagine these two coordinate systems started out with b 
being lined up where x prime equals x at time equals t prime equals zero. And then at any later time, x prime will be offset or x and x prime will be offset by this factor of v times the time in the primed frame. And you can also rearrange this if you want to know what x prime is with respect to the unprimed frame. And so these are the Galilean transformations. With special relativity, however, we're going to see that these aren't going to quite cut it. And instead, we need to introduce this gamma factor, where we'll remember that gamma was something that we defined to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus the velocity divided by the speed of light squared. And you can also rewrite this a bit more simply. 1 minus beta squared, where beta we're also defining as the velocity over the speed of light. So basically, we have to take our Galilean transformations and if we add that gamma factor, now these are the correct Lorentz transformations. Okay, so this is still motion in one direction. So the x axis is the only one that's moving. The y direction and the z direction will stay the same since there isn't a velocity in that direction. And so uh, as we've seen previously in the class, this is usually a pretty good way to think about things because you can usually orient your coordinate system such that you are getting motion and just so we have these two equations which will allow us to convert from the prime coordinate to the unprimed coordinate and we can go either direction. And now what we're going to do is figure out a way to convert between our time coordinates. So we want to go from the t coordinate to the t prime and from the t prime to the t. So we're going to do that by substituting this equation into the other equation. And so what that looks like, so the x now equals gamma times gamma times x minus vt plus vt prime. We'll distribute everything out, gamma squared x minus gamma squared vt plus gamma vt prime. Okay, let's solve this one for t prime, so we'll move everything else to the other side. So gamma vt prime equals x minus gamma squared x minus gamma squared vt. So the next thing that we're going to do is look at this. So we'll factor out an x and we get 1 minus gamma squared 
minus gamma squared vt. So we're going to rewrite this one minus gamma squared term. So first let's remember what gamma is. So gamma is one over square root of one minus v squared over c squared. So that means gamma squared is one over one minus b squared over c squared. So the square root just goes away in the denominator. If we do one minus gamma squared, now we have one minus one over one minus v squared over c squared. If we wanted to subtract these two, we need to find the lowest common denominator, which is just going to be 1 minus v squared over c squared. So now that these have the same denominator, we can subtract these two. This is 1 minus v squared over c squared minus 1. So the 1s just cancel, and you're left with a negative v squared over c squared divided by one minus v squared over c squared. If we look at the denominator, that's just the same thing as gamma squared. So what we end up with is negative v squared over c squared times gamma squared. So this final result is what we're going to plug in to here, where we had our one minus gamma squared terms. So gamma v t prime equals x times negative v squared over c squared gamma squared minus gamma squared v t. When I moved this over earlier, this should have been positive. Okay, so now to get the t prime by itself, we're gonna divide everything by gamma v. So this is negative x v squared gamma squared over c squared gamma v plus gamma squared v t over gamma v. So a lot of things are gonna cancel, this gamma and the square up there, this v and this v. This gamma will cancel with that square, and this v will cancel with that square. So what you're left with is t prime equals gamma times t minus xv over c squared. So this is the transformation between the t prime coordinate and t. So let's see if we want to go the other way. So what if we have t prime and we want to calculate t? So we'll start the same way. We have our two equations for the transformation of our x-coordinate. And so now instead of plugging x prime in to the second equation, we'll plug x into the first equation. So x prime equals gamma times gamma times x prime plus vt prime minus vt. Distribute everything, you get gamma squared x prime plus gamma vt prime minus oh, gamma squared vt prime minus gamma vt. Now we want the t by itself this time, so we're going to move that to the other side and then subtract the x prime. So we get gamma vt equals gamma squared x prime minus x prime plus gamma squared vt prime. Factor out the x prime. Now we have gamma squared minus one plus gamma squared vt prime. 
So earlier we had one minus gamma squared equals negative V squared over C squared gamma squared. So we could do the same thing with gamma squared minus one, but we can also just realize that this is the same thing as negative one minus gamma squared. And so we'll just take the result that we had before and put a negative sign in front of it. And so the negative signs will cancel each other out and you just get V squared over C squared gamma squared. So plug that in. And now let's isolate the T on the left-hand side by dividing through by gamma V. And you'll see that the same kinds of things are gonna cancel. So the gamma squared cancels with the gamma on the bottom, V and the V squared. And now we're left with T equals, we can factor out a gamma, and then we have T prime plus X prime V over C squared. And so now we have our transformations that will let us go from the primed coordinates to the unprimed coordinates and vice versa. So let's just write all those down so that we have all of them. So the X prime equals gamma X minus BT, X equals gamma X prime plus BT prime. And then if we want to do the time coordinates, then we get something that looks like this. Okay, so this will allow us to go from our prime to our unprimed coordinate system. But these are only two of the coordinates and we had introduced this idea of the four vector. So the four vector was X, Y, Z, and then C, T. And we wanna see how we can go to the primed coordinate system. So going from our potentially stationary coordinate system to one that's moving. And how can we compare those two coordinate systems? So we can do so using these um, transformations that we just found. And uh, remember our picture was the coordinate system is, the two coordinate systems are just, uh, I guess I'll redraw them. The coordinate systems are moving with respect to each other along the x-axis where the primed coordinate system is moving with velocity v with respect to the unprimed coordinate system. So if we want to convert our entire four vector from prime to unprimed or vice versa, we might get something that looks like this. So X prime, we saw was gamma X minus VT. Now Y prime and Z prime, there's no motion in either the Y or the Z direction. So the prime and the unprimed coordinates are going to be equal to each other. And then the four vector is C times T prime. So we'll just take our answer for T prime and multiply it by C. So that looks like C gamma T minus V X over C squared. 
Okay, so now I'm going to uh, rewrite the x prime and the t prime terms for convenience that we'll see in a little bit. So first we'll distribute out the gamma. Now for the second term, I'm going to multiply it by c over c. So that's just multiplying by one. So I haven't changed the value of it, but I'm going to group the v over c together. And now v over c is this beta term that we defined earlier. So this becomes gamma x minus gamma beta tc. And now our x prime coordinate transformation includes tc, which is actually the component in the four vector. So that's nice. Now in the t prime, we'll let's distribute out the c gamma to all the terms. So we have t c gamma minus v x c gamma over c squared. So this c squared will cancel with the c on top. And now we have t c gamma minus, so v over c was beta x gamma. And so now I will rewrite this on the next slide. So x prime is now, oops, x prime is now gamma x minus gamma beta tc y prime and y, and z prime and z just map to each other. And then c t prime equals gamma c t minus beta gamma x. And so now we're gonna do another adjustment that will make us able to draw some parallels between this coordinate transformation and another common coordinate, tra coordinate transformation that you may have seen. So that substitution or definition that we're going to do is that we're going to define gamma as the hyperbolic sine of some angle phi. And so remember gamma, we had previously defined as one over square root, one minus b squared over c squared. And then we have this beta term, which is v over c. So this gamma term could also be one over square root of one minus beta squared. Okay, so why call gamma now this hyperbolic cosine? And so we'll use the relationship between hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine squared and one. So this is similar to the relationship that you have for cosine and sine, but there's now a negative sine instead of a positive sine. So let's solve this for the cinch, which is how I'll call hyperbolic sine and I'll call hyperbolic cosine cosh. So solving for cinch, so we'll add that to the other side and then subtract one. It's going to be cosh squared phi minus one. And then we'll take the square root of that to solve for cinch phi, and we get cosh squared phi minus one. So now we're going to take 
our definition for gamma equals cosh phi. So this becomes gamma squared minus one. And gamma squared is just, so gamma squared is just one over one minus beta squared. So we'll plug that in here. Okay, so if we wanna combine these two into one fraction, we need our lowest common denominator. And that's just gonna be one over one minus beta squared minus one over, or one minus beta squared over one minus beta squared. Okay, so now we have one minus one minus beta squared. So that beta squared will become positive. The ones will cancel and you just get beta squared over one minus beta squared. We can pull the beta squared out of the square root. So now we just have beta over square root of one minus beta squared. One over one minus, one over the square root of one minus beta squared is just gamma. So this just becomes beta gamma. And that what we started with was this cinch function. So now we have a definition for hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine that are in terms of beta and gamma. So we're going to rewrite our transformations now so that we have them in terms of the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine. So x prime equals x cosh phi minus ct cinch phi the y and z stay the same. And then ct prime equals ct cosh phi minus x cinch phi. Okay, so why we went through all the trouble of writing with these hyperbolic sines and cosines is this is very reminiscent of rotations in three dimensions. So what I mean by that is if we had an XY coordinate system and we wanted to convert from one system, one Cartesian plane to another that's rotated by some angle theta, we might get a transformation that looks something like this. So this would be a rotation about the y-axis. And so one of the ways that we can think about transformations using in these four vectors with these relativistic uh, effects are similar to rotations in three dimensions. So these boosts in uh, four vectors are, we can think of them as rotations in of our four vectors. So why that might be useful is these rotations in three dimensions where we can go from these kind of written out in equation forms we can rewrite these as 
uh, matrix multiplications. So we apply this rotation matrix R to the unprimed coordinate system, and we get out the primed coordinate system. So what these rotation matrices look like in three dimensions, you might have something like this for rotations about the z-axis. For rotations about the x-axis, you might have something like this. And then this example over here is a rotation about the y-axis. And so your rotation axis about the y looks like this. In the same way, we're going to be able to write our transformations of our four vectors in a way that will allow us to use our knowledge of linear algebra and, for example, matrix multiplication to uh, more effectively tackle these kinds of transformations. And what's especially useful for these matrix notations that we'll see in a moment are that we can very easily have computers do these kinds of matrix multiplications for us. So this was our transformation. And if we want to rewrite this as a transformation in matrix form, it might look like this. So going from the prime to the unprimed coordinate system, if we multiply our unprimed coordinate system by this Lorentz transformation matrix, then we can get an easy way to go from the prime to the unprimed coordinate system. And so this matrix will either look like this, depending on if you want to write in terms of beta and gamma, or if you wanted to write in terms of the hyperbolic cosine and sine. And so this was just a boost up with respect to the x-axis, but you could imagine doing this for boosts to the y-axis or the z-axis using the same kind of math. And so the whole point of this was to develop a four vector and now we've seen how to transform that four vector using this Lorentz transformation. And now that we more generally understand this concept of a four vector, we're going to develop uh, other kinds of vectors like four momentum. And we'll also see what happens to energy when we start thinking about it in terms of this four vector representation.